Continuamos entonces, José Carlos García ya se encuentra con nosotros, él va a moderar este panel sobre tecnologías geoespaciales aplicadas a los sectores productivos y al Estado. ¿Cómo estás, Gira? ¿Cómo te ha ido? Bien, José Carlos, bienvenido, gracias por estar con nosotros, gracias también a las personas que nos acompañan en este importante panel. Adelante entonces con la moderación. Gracias. Gracias, Gira. Muchas, muchas gracias. Y muy contento. Thank you very much, and I'm really happy to be in this eighth uh, week of Geomatic Week with the uh, Agustín Codazzi Institute because we have seen and we have uh, realized how this geological position is uh, based on some platforms and with some other technological, with the fourth revolution technologies, we have a really important role. What is going to happen with the reactivation, the economical reactivation is going to boost innovation and transformation, digital ones. That's why we're going to have a really important panel where we're going to talk the way and such a way these technologies being one of the three very important pillars in Digimatic Week help to a really good way the productive sectors and the state related to the digital, to innovation, and of course to the private sector to lead and to move forward different platforms, of course, and so many initiatives and innovation and entrepreneurship. With no further ado, we're going to start integrating the panelists that we're going to be with us today in this morning in this panel. It's a really important panel that we are developing since this eighth week of Geomatic. So we're going to start integrating, first of all, is Victor Muñoz. He is the Presidential Counselor for Digital Transformation and Economical Affairs of the government, the ones who leads this paramount strategy with digital statement and has some articulations with the public sector. Also, we have Mr. David Luna is the president of of the Alliance, a really young group, which is really important, who gathers all the platforms and they have been moving forward is part of this digital transformation and group with the private initiatives in digital. So, Victor, how are you doing, Consular? Jose Carlos, good morning. Thank you very much for having me here. And a special greeting to David Luna, partner of Digital Battles at this moment from different sectors and well to every single person who is with us here today. Former Minister and Inter-Alliance uh, President, uh, welcome to this panel. The microphone, yes, please. Thank you very much, Jose Carlos, for this invitation. A special greeting to Dr. Victor, and of course, because I go to Cinco Dasi Institute and every single person who has been following us. Well, we're going to invite the Vice Minister of Transformation and Digital. He is Herman Rueda, Herman Rueda, who is working big time within the TICS as well with the private sector, and he has been helping us the public policy as well as Victor Munoz, counselor, goes together with the needs of the market, also of the talent that is required, and of course to response to these sectors and this economy because we need it the most. Uh, according to the digital and technology to move forward, what is coming in 2021, which is very really challenging. Vice Minister Reda, welcome you to again. Thank you very much, Councillor Victor, Mr. David, and every single person who has been connecting here. It's a really interesting topic today. Thank you very much, Vice Minister. Thank you for being with us this eighth week, dramatic eighth week with this Agustin Codazzi Institute. And we're going to interact as well with the private sector. Director Jose Luis Gomez, he's the Vice President of Innovation of Claro Colombia, a company and operator who is doing a really huge twist as in integrating solutions and personal and human talent and overall technology according to infrastructure, data centers, networks, fiber optic, uh, 4G. There are some tests, uh, 5G in some regions as well. 
as a complement of this virtuous circle between among st states, applications, and private sector for the digital and economical transformation in Colombia. Jose Luis, welcome to this panel. What about Jose Carlos, the great uh, councillor, former ministers and ministers, every single person who has been here with us. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Okay, let's get started. And of course, we're getting through the social media and the digital platforms or the Agustin Codazzi Institute, and of course, from Blue Radio, Caracol News as well, in this alliance that we've got from the Blue 4.0, the only program by radio with this kind of content in this digital transformation and digital transformation itself as well. We're going to start, if you allow me, Victor Munoz, counselor, that you're working on this and you are getting together with the states and the private sector as well, from different other sectors to the government as well. What is the importance of these technologies? Hey, hey, oh referentials and geospace in this equation of the transformal digitization from the government. Well, Jose Carlos is a really important question, and it is important. Why? Because every single that happens with the citizens uh, have something related things with time, space, and place, and that's why in this is important to have all the geolocalization and geospace of uh, people and things as well. I guess when you gather the whole story related to associated topics or pandemic, for example, as a conclusion, as different, as contagious, or different people in risks, because allows us, in a really simple way, to focalize all the efforts that the government has to move forward related to the information, because of the information that they got in their visors and related to a vertical job that allows the government uh, penetrate these kind of strategies is very important. Uh, and it, that is that important because uh, Colombia buys efficient. We just signed the Marco Agreement in order to have the concept of software under demand with different sectors of the public activities or sectors in order to have the acquisition of these images. So we'll see is really important and we have been always talking about the fundamental and the component related to the whole information that is working for this to have many points of view. And first of all, and let's say that we're going to be really important uh, when that happens. And the event, for example, in Providence, to have the information, to have the maps, the locations, to have everything in detail to know what about the blogs and everything, because all these ledgers allows us to have quick decisions and to have some energetical decisions, uh, pipelines, and all every single components that we have, uh, it works in the daily basis. You talk about really important things with the people as well, and regions as well. I would like to to ask uh, Vice Minister related to the digital zone and what is the important thing and how have you been to integrate these technologies to your geolocation in your own digital and government digital government uh, positioning as well. It's very really important the question Jose Carlos because from TIX Ministry we have a team dedicated to have the companionship and we are really interested and that's why it's really important to have uh, this clear in pro under the service of citizens. That's why we need to give accessibility and uh, access to the information to make decisions. Just for telling you some initiatives from Mintic, we have been able to deliver a strategy. We have been working together for too many years. The Opal Portal tab, double www.data.com as well. And we have been delivering some data and the government and the country, national and territorial level. We have more than 12,000 data composed uh, because they have been reported for more than 2,500 public reports. And we have been visiting 1,000 
120 million times uh, visitors and this year it has been really important to relate it to the pandemic from the data that we have as the counselor was mentioning the articulation that the the information that we have been gathering from the Dania from different entities and to be able to offer this in order to make decisions. Due to this, I tell you that precisely to find open geographical data are published in too many formats to facilitate the consumption of every single user. We have integrated data and uh, IGAC data as well, among others. I would like to share some of them are the open geographical data from maps or Colombian soils and lines from one to 100,000 classification of lines or classification maps or fails or seismics as well. So there is a really huge important tool because allow every single important to use and to reuse to start creating their own analysis as well and to make better decisions, which is part of the benefits that deliver technology as we were discussing to become a really important transformation. In addition, we do a really companionship job related to intelligent cities. And I mention it because it has been really important as we were mentioning in those national plans and own development plans as well. We have seen and really important increasing a really huge interest in territorial intelligent projects as well. So with uh, the purpose to support, to contribute these ecosystems of the initiative in different places in the country this year from the ministry with some companionship workshops, regional ones to contribute to these initiatives. What have we seen? They are telling us that what, what do they say from the different members of the territories. There is a huge evidence that links the geospatial, the geospatial technolo technological, not only big cities, but also the interest of municipalities, of small municipalities related to populations. And I'll share just a couple of examples. For example, that Sesquile, Cundinamarca, in the project they have uh, already established, there is a referential project of characterization of uh, population, of mapping, and they are trying to identify with the vulnerability populations to generate some strategies. And in this kind of uh, strategies, the most important part is not only from the public entities like the city halls or governors as well, or from other sectors. And that's why it's really important this participation of different perspectives from private sector, but from government as well. And we are working in the civil society as well and academics because it's a key to take advantage of these different perspectives as well. On the other hand, for example, in Pasto, there is a company, Gumobiliad is its name, and they are running a project where they're doing some intelligent diagnosis mobility related to georeferentials and allows us to have a better vehicle mobility and to design public spaces and more secure in order to respond to all the citizen and also they have a component in that related to touristic uh, uh, visits and to rebuild architectural and so paths taking advantage of uh, augmented uh, reality and 3D to facilitate, to foster the access of the information. Obviously, it has a commercial component, a thought in tourists as well, but it helps to the territory to improve all the offering and punctual in the Pasto City. When it has been really interesting to see, and in this a companionship from the ministry with these co-creation workshops, and it's an exercise we have been delivering from this huge interest. They have been using these geospace technologies. Uh, we have been doing some huge challenges as well with this articulated work, understanding the needs 
they are placing and they are extracting mm, the decisions of making decisions as well and the maps and in the visualizations and every single tool they do need to understand all of this that I'm telling you it comes from the ministry, from the punctually administrative as well. The, the ones who are connected from the territorial authorities, I want you to know in the webpage, digital um, government, uh, gov.co, uh, intelligent cities, open data, and some other initiatives that we're available, we have available for the whole country. Okay, our Vice Minister, thank you very much. We're going to take advantage of a really quick way for as an excuse to our presidential counselor. He has an, another appointment or something before leaving Munoz, counselor related to transform digitization. How do you think is this initiative working and is running facing 2021 uh, your referential and uh, your localization technologies uh, work well jose carlos and i'm really excuse myself i apologize because i have to uh, go to an appointment but well first of all we need to start talking about the multi-purpose land registry in this a future job that we have been working as allows us to know not only the information but the usage of the soils as well but the structures that we have had over there according to the location and this is really important for the construction of the policies and the actions as the other plans that we've got in the territory second of all as we have been mentioning everything related to the agreement as well and the access to the information is really important to focalize efforts on uh, this part uh, because of this commitment with Colombia, we have more than 400 projects uh, that overcomes 270 million pesos related to investments and resources and, and terms or ways or roads and interventions as well in different places require clearly just um, uh, satellite information that allows us to deliver all these components in detail, not only within the community, but in every single entities that that are participating in these constructive entities. So, for example, it caught my attention when this morning when you were doing the panels related or it was the presenting to the information related to the usage of uh, social media related to satellite and the change of the land usage as well. That is pretty important as well because of this change and because of the usage of technology to improve the advantage of the usage of lands as well in order to have a better, a more intelligent way with technologies, with drones, as well as satellite technologies, uh, with the internet of the things as where we're going to have a better investment and uh, taking advantage of the resources. So facing that reactivation, economical reactivation, of course, we're going to have a really important role, as I insist, related to multi-purpose land registry is not uh, only good to us, but it's a transformational and the usage of the lands, that information that we've got in the country, obviously, modern times and uh, registrations and land registrations as well municipalities in the rural sector which is one directed to the soil such a way clearly the information and the and the geographical component and the combination with some of our technologies and even more the thing with the information in tion right with open data for citizens we're going to have access uh, related to what we are doing is paramount is fundamental and it's a uh, it's priority and it's very important as well Thank you very much, Councillor. I would like to ask David Luna, which uh, I remember uh, when you were in ministry, you were working with open sources, with the data and institutional information and states and regions as well, and the maps and your references are available data for you from Alliance E uh, leader in as the groups and the platforms, you can use those data to build up. It's going to be a bigger layer from the entrepreneurship and digital economy. What do you think about this uh, related to this alliance and David Luna and geolocalization in order to applications in order to start entrepreneurship and new business models? 
Yes, indeed, Jose Carlos. Before answering uh, your questions, I would like to say something. First of all, thanks to the vision Colombia has achieved to build up over the building up. So related to the state political is not just a punctual government, but that's why connectivity and the connection of the citizens is, a, is an added value because without it, we're not gonna be able to have access, for example, to your referenciation module and the work of private sector handling by public sector has been really effective and really efficient as well. It's an infrastructure, and to lead internet to farther places we lack more and we have too many things to do and secondly i have been recognizing and today i recognize to the vice minister uh, there is a, something really important in matter to digital government not only because of the important acts of open data but fundamentally because of the multi-purpose land registry project we need to start working from the public and private sector control sector city halls and governors as well why because that project has allows us to have to be more efficient and progress and make progress as well to have the data the census and not only citizens but livings as well on territories it's going to be fundamental to make better decisions. And finally, obviously, as you said, none of the apps of the entrepreneurs of the entrepreneurs that they use technological use they won't be able without these matters of your conversation. And we have been done an effort, and we need to continue insisting we can save codes from the structural point of view. The counselor said in the satellite matter, every single entity does a huge effort to buy images. What is important, for example, the state, according to the uh, where framework prices, they could buy a huge thing. But the most important of all is what the vice minister said, to place that information available to every single citizen. I hope in its total for free because information and open data is what allows to have more entrepreneurships and innovation no matter if you're big medium or small in a business module itself thank you very much david he is the president of uh, alliance in so you're hearing the panel where we are definitely in a really uh, active way this your special and your collocation generate digital transformation and help to habilitate to enable and here the magic occurs when the private sectors with more initiatives and some other platforms are working together and allowed to have more effective for example the payments and companies and entrepreneurs they're going to be able to do and to generate wealthy as well that's why we're going to invite the Vice President of Claro here in Colombia, a company who has been working and getting appropriations with some more technologies with the collectivity, which is the core of the business itself for this company really to move forward in this economy. Jose Luis, tell us a little bit more about your work and the inclusion of your references and maps, of course, and the bet on the commercial part as well in Claro. Well, Jose Carlos, the main topic what you have been studying is the digital transformation. The digital transformation is a concept that we have been working together like one or two years, technologically speaking. But when we talk about your referential, we're talking about these kind of things uh, along the evolution uh, because of networks and technologies. And this thing, for example, for industries, it has been working like more than 10 years. For vehicles, that I guess is the first asset that we have here. And according to these technologies and processing and some uh, devices, we're talking about the different solutions that are going to be some of the monitoring of a vehicle of one person of a good as well as a fridge. 
Obviously, the companionship of these transforming and the networks of the communications allows to have huge fields to mix your localization and the needs of technology and evolution. One of the most important examples related to this matter is the tracking of monitoring of the sales forces as well. Of course, pandemic placed us in a really complex uh, sales forces situation, but with this reactivation, efforts and efficiency of the expenses and resources is a priority for every single company. And to know what is my sales force is doing on the field and how they are working and how they are getting all that information. Where did he, my salesman, did a visit, how, when, where, and uh, all those information helps companies to make decisions. And as the Vice Minister said, at multipurpose, uh, land registry is very important for knowing the usage of that uh, land and what is over that land. Uh, from Claro, we have the commitment as well with every single customer and with Colombia reflecting in investments and infrastructure and coverage. We're total sure that the taking advantage of these technologies and this information is going to lead us to place the Colombia to a next level of this information. Okay, Jose Luis is the Vice President of Innovation here, Clara at Colombia, listening to them how to use these technologies and to uh, practical exercise and tangible as well. Yeah, localization, not only in delivering services as well, but the solutions for solutions for the month. Remember, hashtag geographical week. Hashtag social media, whatever of them from IGAC or social media as the digital presence of the Agustin Codazzi Institute and Blue Radio and Caracol News as well. You have been finding the summary of all of this. I would like to ask Vice Minister of the TIC, Herman Rueda. There is something really important uh, how to start working with the regions as well and city halls as well. They are doing the usage of uh, technologies and georeferenciation as well as the transformational ways. I would like to ask you uh, if you were asking to the CEOs, to those people who are in charge of the TI, uh, TI the city halls, uh, what is the advice? That how? they can appropriate and how to transcend in the geolocalization and to have some solutions to transform and improve the quality of life or their citizens. Well, I believe the first uh, thing as a suggestion, get connected with the ministry offering and I Tell you again, www.data.gov.co with geographical positions in order to know what is available because the national entities have uh, done a huge effort to be available this information and there are some visualizations and some exercises that there's gonna be as a benefit and to start open the mind related to the possibilities they've got uh, to build up and those uh, groups that they already established. So in fact, uh, see some examples with AGAC and what they have done, is, which is really important to understand those exercises they've uh, done. And there are too many uh, links and information with those examples. And secondly, with the exercise that we have been mentioning before with intelligent, smart and cities, and to start doing those ideas and those solutions, they are thought and my suggestion in the final user to build up the exercises, building up the exercise that we need to solve, not only use technology, but using is really important, this space uh, of experimentations and knowledge as well, but starting from punctual needs in every single territory. So I would like invite you with this module, which is a diagnosis, and it's part of the result of the diagnosis. It's going to help 
and to boost the different topics to orientate a little bit where could we start and of course every single is not going to be simultaneously but we need to be really a strategic based on your communities and you have seen thirdly to tell you is was this the semester which is very important and it's over data sandbox as well from the ministry we just have uh, room for public entities they have a control time to experiment with technologies advanced technologies if you want to do processing of a huge volumes of information of big data we have been able the tool to apply as a specific project and to take advantage of the capability that we have been available with this association of technological partners, strategical ones. During three or four months, we're going to be able to hang some information analytics and to build some modules and to work with some algorithms when they will be working in most advanced way from the ministry. We have some tools to support those spaces and really safety places and control rooms and to experiment and to try with this gather of information, of course, these digital governments, which is really able to do so. And uh, with uh, this, with two, some other things, we invite you to be connected with all these offer and this, this support in a really free way from the ministry. Okay, Vice Minister from Technological and, Tra and Digital Transformation Governments, Herman Rueda. I would like to ask uh, for the first thing, I and David Luna, which is group of apps and uh, platforms as well, which uh, obviously they translate all these technologies to work with these practical situations and companies such a way, David, entrepreneurs that maybe they're listening to us, maybe they have an idea in order to have these geolocalization technologies and what about opportunities from some other business modules and some other alternatives and you would say and you would you suggest to this community well Jose carlos first of all open data are really important uh, to achieve and making decisions and to solve issues to the people an innovator entrepreneur the first thing that he or she should ask himself what am i solving to a citizen what am i solving to a businessman or a public entity and your referenciation at this moment is important i'm gonna tell you three cases prevention of disasters if we have the capability uh, Internet of the Things and your referenciation to do a follow up to determine ecosystems. We're going to go easy way to warn or to avoid disasters. And at this moment, uh, where we have suffered too much recently, I do believe there is a huge opportunity overall for entrepreneurs and innovators. They play to state uh, these services. Secondly, topics related to agriculture agriculture necessarily needs to take advantage of technology not only to improve profits as well but uh, to improve something really important is to determine conditions for example weather or currents as well as, as the speaker was saying previously it, for moving forward in a better way that activity and obviously everything related to the sustainable cities and smart cities as well one city is not smarter than the other one because of the amount of devices connected one city is smarter than other because children live happier because there is more less traffic uh, how can we do it with technology georeferenciation is important to identify an, an security points or high traffic or high concentration of children such a way to deliver better opportunities to society is going to be vital and essential and i take advantage of this because uh, i guess it's not a good topic but it's necessary for example jose carlos for example, some of our countries, neighbors like Panama, for example, 32% less than tax uh, amount or average in technology. And they have been announcing some reforms, taxes, uh, 
reforms in the future, taking care about this. The eco Colombian ecosystem you cannot be compared by the Silicon Valley if it was well Amazon or Facebook or Netflix. That doesn't mean that Colombian businessmen is doing well. We're just born in. We're just strengthened. That's why I call the national government to be really careful to establish new taxes for this ecosystem that it was born. Maybe Bogota made a mistake. Maybe Bogota made a mistake to enhance the industry and trade for the electronic uh, group. Let's not make the same mistake and please be surrounded with digital environment because this is a Colombian ecosystem, not the European one, not the American one. The announcement of the tax reform, it has to be really thought when we talk about technology. Very well, David, thank you very much. I would like to ask, as well as you mentioned, the smart cities to Jose Luis Gomez, the Vice President of Innovation in Claro, because I've, I've told you have a business unit. It generates uh, solutions among some uh, smart cities. How are you integrated, especially in that unit, uh, georeference and geolocalization, Jose Luis? Well, we have uh, a specific area when it's related to digital solutions. And one of those cases of smart cities as well, because part of what we have seen in this technological evolution is that previously smart cities it was seen like objects, technological objects connected to be able to make decisions. Now the concept has been evolving and they're focusing as well. This is just a complex system connected that allows us as uh, previously they were saying, to have a benefit to the citizen, not only security or optimization of time, as what is happening, in fact, in that specific area within the company is in charge of supporting to make decisions of the different local governments or city halls to see which is the best plan. And we're going to start talking about smart cities. Maybe there are some concepts or light, green lights or traffic lights, intelligence, or but when the moments where we are, I'm talking about that information of your reference. I guess it's more important to see mobility, to see flows of a city has according to the schedule, critical points when the constructions are done in order to become more efficient or displacements or movements or crowded places to be able that the city flows. And I take advantage of this because we talk about 5G because of an addition that we have done so many tests that with Mintic of this new technology, there is a huge promise to lead the cities that make the decisions of what is the best uh, as uh, habitants and citizens, maybe is the future, maybe just a reality that we are changing day by day. And to have that information and to take advantage of this with the purpose of having a better quality of life to every single citizens of Colombians, let's say is the main focus in. And we have been seeing it to take advantage of all that information to have an usage to improve the quality of life of displacements that is a is a really serious and to have a huge control maps as well uh, where it's going to have uh, some active reactives and no reactive uh, things so the advantage of all that information deployed in a huge map as you know in order to know what is happening in the end of the day to offer benefits to the citizens Benefits to the citizens is a really, really huge important what I would like to go to the Vice Minister, Herman Reda, Mintic, because specifically it is really necessary, it's urgent to have the opportunity to train talent. It's one of the situations that uh, Vice Ministers, as you have been telling in many forums, 
uh, the need of human talent, uh, specialized people in too many sectors with TICs and specialists, with georeferenciation, with maps, with machine learning that goes over these information layers. What can you tell us about training situations? You have said they have some initiatives. Uh, what, what else can you tell us facing these geolocalization technologies? Very important question, Jose Carlos, and I tell you of two punctual initiatives that we are working and they are in this line of this uh, talk today. The first one is uh, data science training. Data science, it has become a knowledge area that is not only from uh, uh, people who are interested and to develop even more bad companies because we've got a gold mine with a hot a lot of information, but it doesn't work if we cannot take the information of this with the science data. We can do that analysis of huge amounts of information we have been gathering from different sources. But we have, for example, in data, what we're doing in different entities, as we have been saying, the sa that the sandbox, uh, uh, and I was going to tell you some uh, couple of examples that we have done with the MPN and Danny as well. But the bet, uh, one of the, those bets of our programs is precisely is in sci science data. It started just one year ago. Just a strategy, we have been working together with some other uh, appropriation and entity, call it one as well. We have some teachers in the United States. The leader is one Harvard professor. And we have been working from 700 or 1,600 people around the city. We have been training through this initiative. And it's really important because we have given the tools and the specific training for them to solve challenges and real challenges, of course, not only the training, but also as a part of this program, we have done some convocates in order to um, convoke as private and, and challenges as well. We have these solutions and we have these challenges as well. And the students, as a part of the execution of the project, they have been solving these issues. And it has been really, really good because uh, it's applicable, it's the practical, it's not theoretical because we're delivering companies according to the challenges and the solutions that the students have uh, given to us as well. Today's Thursday, the day after tomorrow, in the afternoon, we're going to have the selection of the winners in the previous round that we did. In May or June, the students are using information and solving issues. From the three finalists, they're solving some challenges. On the other hand, with the penitentiary side and health, as we're using geographical data. So it's super interesting. And I guess it's one of the projects I like the most because it's a real impact and we're trying to generate its tall capacity. There are five universities enrolled so far in order to start establishing among those entities and every single unit. We have the knowledge on how to execute. There is Rosario's University. There is Cartagena's University, and I don't remember the other two ones, but they're in order to start establishing this capacity around the country. Mission 2022, which is our strategy of this government related to the president as well, and the uh, minister carrying 100,000 programs as well. And this is very important because we have given uh, the uh, uh, digital skills with this kind of a knowledge you know, to specialize in different lines and to go deep in every single aspect. And I really thank the support that I've uh, received, received from the private sector with David. We have been sharing and the contribution from entities and from technology companies. It has been really important because we built up an icon based on what the sector needs. And once again, is not just a curriculum that we have invented, but we need to be more practical. And we are launching challenges within the uh, training, uh, within the private sector. So we are offering with this program for free with every single Colombian the skills to have the base of logical thought uh, 
and computational thinking. It has an English component related to skills, not only for this, but as a country related to every single we need to have a fourth industrial revolution. Uh, we have been moving forward with the first car that's going to end it up in the month of December, the first initial training with too many countries, with too many steps as well. Next year, we're going to start training 50,000 people in 2020 to 100,000 um, places and enrollments as well. So it's really important because we have been talking about this and with David and some other players to build up over the building up and are related to what we've got and to work hand by hand with Academy. We have been supporting and people who are, have been interesting these are two examples or what we have done in order to close this digital gap and something that we do need the transformational work and the participation of different disciplines and not only uh, engineers but the one who you you can imagine who are facing these projects but uh, multidisciplinary teams uh, uh, they have been working in these initiatives Okay, Vice Minister, you talked about the virtue articulation when is the private sector and the public sector working together, as well as David Luna, president of the Alianza E in this really young group as well, where we have been gathered in these kind of things. How do you see, for example, in this uh, a guild as well with this support and you are giving and contributing as well with the uh, georeferenciation and science as well or how do you think about uh, about the alliance and what are the expectations for 2021 well, Jose Carlos, first of all, Alianza In has uh, three alliances in the country. First of all, to extend digital alphabetization as well. Secondly, to train sustainable cities and intelligent ones. And thirdly, the computational thinking. And over the third, all the support uh, to related to the vice minister has mentioned before. I do think in Colombia we need to continue doing huge efforts to train uh, big number of developers and programmers uh, who have the capability to absorb internal needs but two to deliver services in some more latitudes in the meanwhile in the united states a developer charges 150 dollars in india and in Romania, they have been working $90 per hour. Colombia, perfectly because of uh, its uh, good capability of uh, change of uh, schedules as well, um, because we have a really important uh, Spanish, it could be really important. So we need to have more attitudes as well. For example, some skills in English, for example, and to have... Uh, the deficit to train the deficit that we have so this a uh, total support of this initiative uh, which uh, has uh, this vice minister is just uh, for example 100,000 maybe we can develop that number because we need to work together and to avoid to the maximum the desertion which is, is the most difficult situation that there exists and thinking in the long and the medium term we are not able to continue uh, training uh, the people that the market needs. We need to train for the future years. That's why I've been from the thesis we need to teach from the very young people to small uh, our children and teachers computational thought. My daughter is four years old. At the school at this moment, they, she doesn't have that subject of that election. So we just downloaded a program and two days per week we sit down to develop a class of uh, computational thought for a four years old boy and you cannot imagine the skills in such a way she can get and there are some free programs to low cost as well that should be as a country 
or from the governments or parties. If we do a good job, we're going to have that talent. Finally, certifications. Many universities that they have been talking about 4.0 education, they have been bringing to the first semester to the last semester, and they have done some agreements with the companies and certifiers, the companies, or the owners of that software to certify those skills. Why? Because if there's just one person certified starting their professional life or starting their university life, they can be hired and in parallel to study generating a scale economy really important for that process itself. Well, is the former minister of TICS and the current uh, in Alliance is really relevant and is very important to gather all the platforms and apps. And I would like to ask Jose Luis Gomez, which is the Vice President of Innovation of Claro, what can you see ahead? Is just a company that you can see here as a private sector who are the ones who are seeing forward with the labs and investments and investigations. What can you see afterwards uh, and applications and opportunities around the georeferential and geolocation? as well. Well, Jose Carlos, as I've been telling you, talking about technology level that are smart cities, I guess one of the biggest fields that were technological usage of this a special uh, thing is going to be really important for the triangulation that is going to happen in the cities. Secondly, the handling of the whole information that different apps and different service by internet for the ones who are users or mobile devices for determined apps is a huge source of information that currently, and I come back to the point, it has some benefits for the users of handling or some applications that are leading us and, and some applications of the alerts where there is the person who is calling us or that kind of what we're requesting is to know how it'll be available for every sector or for every private public as well and to implement all these advances for the improvement of the citizenship as well as the improvement of the companies. And I've been telling you, the Vice Minister, as the Minister, two really important topics, the new profiles that are really important for this digital transformation, because the concept itself, as well as been adopting, and at least here in Colombia and to many countries after March 17, it has been delivering just a quantic jump. And the way we used to work, and now, Currently, the way we're working and how did we pass to the physical contact to virtuality from one day to another? So we need to take advantage and to be detached as well because we have big causes, lots and technological, the way we can take advantage of how these cultural changes from the companies, even in the entities and the public entities, how could we change the way of we work to be able to move forward and taking advantage of those technological advances from one day to another, everything was remotely and it was mandatory, the digital transformation. And now we need to take advantage of these technologies. They have been evolving with some concepts of vehicles connected and tracking of objects, agriculture. There are too many things to do ahead. Intelligent, sparkling things, and, and not necessarily that we need to arrive the last connectivity generation, for example, with 5G. But currently, with the solutions that we've already established with 4 and 4.4 5G, we can get into this present and not only just waiting for the new cases, reaching the future and some other cases we have had the place. And in two years' time, we have seen 6G. And in three years, 7G, we cannot wait for the latest cutting-edge technology because it's a good moment in order to know which are the good profiles for the industry we need to hire in order to understand what's happening. Secondly, what is the technological priority we need to attack? 
that is going to solve a problem because it's not just uh, watching technology but solving an issue just in a really efficient way with the technological tools that likely currently allows us to solve issues in a really different way. And third, we're going to see and uh, we're going to move forward to the logical advances, new generations, new speeds, uh, less latents as well, and devices and capacities to connect. But how are we going to start attacking today? Currently, we're going to give a huge step, a really huge step. And how are we going to continue moving forward with the technological track as well? And we take advantage of this push the situation in order to move forward to the next level. And up here, I would like to clarify, we're talking about these labs because we need to be the best ally for private sector to the next level, to that Colombian connected, to automatize Colombia, that uh, small cities have a reference as a continent. To that connected Colombia, to automatize Colombia is a perfect message to be integrated to our Herman Rueda, Vice Minister. In that articulator, transversal job and mission of that role the minister has in the TIC to implement and to lead the digital transformation and digital logical to the other ministries. What has been the job that you have had related to the, this? The job in order to support, as Jose Luis was connecting, like sectors with agriculture, justice, health, education, and some others, of course, to implement and using those technologies of geolocalization and georeferenciation. Well, and I'm sorry, I'm going to take an advantage to tell you just a little bit because the points of that Jose Luis that has been delivering here since the talent matter. And since the ministry taking into account that is not only in the short term, but in a medium and long term as well, I tell you because of the ones who have been connecting and they want to take advantage of these initiatives. And we have been thinking in a group of the 08 and 14 years old program programming for children with the British Council Alliance. We trained uh, teachers as a micro bit in order to learn and to experiment. And we have a code EG program. They're going to be from five and eight, nine years old, that group. And we have an initiative with digital curriculums with official school. We're including within their curriculum some this kind of technology and science and mathematics as well. And we have also a program with the Roots Step. We have been training teachers not only acquire the knowledge, but only can include within their schools and different spaces and building up within their curriculums and the things that they are seeing our young people, that computational thinking, those bases independently for the provision, because not all of them we're going to have uh, an engineer independently for the profession, of course. And those uh, industries that we know today, in two or three years, we're going to have some develops that we are here. That's why that bet is very important as well. We have been from the government and our programs in these latest years. And it's really tied to the question why? Because this is just an alliance with education ministry, computers to educate with some entities from the government, and other training is the CEO level, is the thought in our leaders and our directors that are going to be able to acquire that information, to be able to have a better usage, and including it in the development as well, and develops uh, hand by hand with the thing commercial and industry and trade. We are, the, we are part of the strategic committee and the center of the fourth industrial revolution, which affiliates as well. Uh, so there's an articulated job government with academies and private sector and initiatives precisely to boost different uh, drills and pilots in these uh, prioritized sectors. So our role from the ministry, as well saying, as well as support as articulation, we have a bet to prioritize sectors as well as the health ministry. We come here since a long time in the interoperability operational with the clinical history. We already gave a first step and the resolution that it was launched was just one year ago to massify the telemedicine component. Of course, technological one and the Justice Ministry and the High Courts and the Judicial Courts as well, 
We are working together to support and to contribute to the judicial file, to the digital one. We have some initiatives with so many entities as a support, for example, in our citizen uh, supports, urban ones, as well as our service for the ones you know, interpretable, and, and it's education, citizenship, and to ease your a better life for the citizens, because we need to interchange some information directly, interoperate with some established standards that the person doesn't need to go to an, uh, a physical place to receive and goes to the other one and, and, and enrolls the documents and everything, but the citizen goes just for his computer and start working in a digital way. And we gave the entities this um, tool to do it in a better way for us consultancies and requests to do the the procedures. This is a very important job. It has been working from uh, this digital transformation and the consultant as well, Victor, has been a really important player because it has been helping us to articulate every single entities of this high impact with this association with the Congress. For example, this law, we have 15, 52 law thinking precisely in our services, digital, the anti-tramit laws to easy every single entity. So we have a support team. When we have achieved to move forward in hand by hand with the entities and the adoption of the, go and the digital government and implementation of technological solutions, speaking about digital as a country, we already defined X role as an interoperability platform, so we have done a companionship of uh, almost 40 entities from the entity of the implementation of this interoperability uh, with the race treasury and to authentic documents as well in the digital documents to or to dispose this kind of thing to make sure that the person of the entity who is behind a transaction is the one who says he is. And it's a really important job as a complement with capabilities as well. We have 1,500 um, public employees uh, as a diplomat with the National University as a supporter uh, in order for them to get the knowledge and really practical information and too many initiatives that we were saying with the data sandbox, with the DANE, with the OPERA as well. We are placing uh, we are doing we're doing our best in order to give all these populations and in order to get uh, these initiatives as well vice minister thank you very much you were talking about something relevant which is very important that i would like to uh, wide and to go deep and with David Luna, the president of the IND Alliance with these platforms and associations and digital ones in Colombia. And it's related to, from your point of view, what is missing? What about the challenges within the ecosystem and with the regulatory systems where, where you see for your group or your guild and your trade, they have more easier to not be expected to the development and creation and production of new business models and new projects and new entrepreneurship plans as well in order, of course, to reactivate economy. Jose Carlos, technology it goes faster than laws, and that's why it's really important to have the reaction capability to achieve that the user always will be in the middle of every single discussion. The user needs to have the right to choose, to determine which kind of service or mobility or trade or government they prefer to establish or to use. And in that way, it's really important as well to understand that obviously changes create uncertainty as well, but those changes, we cannot use the shortcut. That's why it's very important, it's very valuable to work in laws and regulations that I insist again, they start thinking in to protect the users and to give them the possibilities that they're going to be able to do so and overall the opportunity to choose. We're in a really permanent debate related to personal freedoms. Technology is related to personal freedom. What? How are we going to do it? and the way I'm going to do it. So I think it's very important and it's essential to move forward and in that way to understand that obviously we're not going to be able to continue thinking in updating the laws that were 
expired 30 years ago. We need to start creating and start thinking new regulations because such a way they're going to be essentials in order to move these forward ahead. To plus, for example, the Vice Minister was saying related to the sandbox that uh, they have been working to regulate the fintech or to regulate the digital government or to phase the electronic file, but to alert that laws like the new general of the tourism that that is a series of difficulties that the digital tourism moves forward to place to the apps in tourism terms to fulfill those regulations that were uh, like 20 or 3 years ago or related to uh, surveillance and control or the stores or establishments, uh, they could be a, a, a mistake or something. And is the becomes more than 30% of international tourism. And I think those kind of things is very important to place on the table. And I do think the market is in charge to regulate most part of the services, but is the states really necessary to do some control related why we want to regulate? Let's do it with new regulations and not trying to update the laws from 30 years ago. And I would like to end it up just with this because I think it is really essential and fundamental to see in such a way it's understood the possibilities that we've got the needs and the business heads itself and now look our physical ones to generate better opportunities and regulations of the new businesses and certainly we're going to have we're going to see a huge advance because the user is the one who receives the information and is the one who receives the information and to make the determination to say i'm going to use it or i am not Okay, David, thank you very much. I would like to ask Jose Luis Gomez, the Vice President of Innovation of Claro, because of the 5G. Are we ready in your branch of the Plaza Claro? At your branch, you already have, a, and so you're trying at Medellin as well, 5G with Claro. And we have the entrance of the Internet of Things, millions of sensors, uh, broadcasting information and data. Information and generalization is uh, really important, of course, for this is paramount. This is really important. So how do you see this integration to these technologies that we have been talking here this geomatic week and is going to be active uh, related to 5G? Okay, Jose Carlos, of course, we're already in 5G. We have been working together with Mintic as the, the test as well of these five, six months extended by other six according to the conditions what the ministry establishes. And we have been supporting through our infrastructure three cases of general case with these mobile dispositions, connection of uh, internet at home. That what today is the, through fiber of color or Wi Fi and private networks for the usage or the, the B2B. Today we have connected in Bogota in our offices a network available for the things that we have been working the last week. We have been working with the uh, root related to 5G and usage case, which is really important, which is educational as well. Uh, how can we reach those new profiles as well as the vice minister of the minister, which are really important or this fourth revolution? But how are we going to take advantage of this technology for the classes will transform a digital transformation as a consequence of the pandemic? How are we going to have future classes? How are we going to transform and transmit that knowledge? And has, how has been been working with the City Hall? For example, we have been showing the community allows us to this community for the usage to deploy in two more cities, which is Cali and Barraca Bermeja. Uh, we believe, no doubt, uh, 5G is going to open new opportunities, mainly because of three reasons that you have been mentioning bigger speed and this is very important for determined usage cases uh, theoretical um, 
uh, cases, we have been talking about 5.G gigas. We have been in Plaza Claro, 900 megabytes in just one device, mobile device. Secondly, latency, which is a very important topic to industrial solutions. Uh, for every single thing that is related to making decisions, and one of the now and uh, knowledge uh, automatize uh, cars where they should go to break not to stop or not to do so and uh, latency is critical term and some other advance that we have been seeing in some other technological firms like barcelona this year has been in the gsm with the surgeries at the distance that allowed the dog tours two kilometers or thousand kilometers of distance they're going to be able to do a surgery as a latency term is going to be really important but to reach the think of millions of devices connected at the same time 5g has a particularly the amount of disposals or that we have by quarter meter quarter and uh, for 4g has like capacity of 1000 devices connected per kilometer square kilometer where well, we're talking about more in this part as well so up there we're going to start talking those new devices and the new solutions where it's going to have is allows us to connect every single of uh, device that we're going to have in the home or at home or in the industry positioning and geolocalization the possibilities are infinite Remember, all this information is always for making decisions. It's not only just to be able to obtain that information and to take advantage of the gifts that the technological have. It has the promises. Battery life is just a challenge currently for devices that are placed in just a field or or just in a traffic light or in a camera that they're going to be able to have a feeding of energy because of the lasting of that battery and to draw all that information in a map and take decisions of a field of how they have been feeling in a humid zone in a cafe tile or a coffee zone or something or the way we're using water according to uh, something related to agriculture so there are too many cases that we have been working together as i've been mentioning before we're gonna reach uh, those technological advances related to what we've got to a four point or five g is gonna open new capabilities as we were mentioned and uh, once again in two more years we're going to see what technologies is going to evolve, are going to be hand by hand of the process to the ministry in order to reaffirm that commitment that we've got in Colombia to reinvest and to cover a bigger zone with the connection as well. As, uh, like one year ago with the binding of the spectrum to 700 so while we have been working together with the commitment with the best technology the investment to be with the colombia that we have been working with with colombia automatized colombia thank you very well jose luis gomez vice president one of our panelists that were together of course, we thank you, Herman Rueda, our Vice Minister of the Tics, David Luna, President of the Alliance Inns of the Guild of these platforms, and Victor Munoz, our Council and Presidential, they were with us here, and we understood the way these technologies were applied in productivity and digital transformation of economics in every single sector, and also educational and training of people in technology of information in Colombia. So we'd like to leave you with Gina Perez from the EJAC. And uh, thank you, Gerard, for this invitation. Thank you for this dramatic week. And something or is going to continue working tomorrow in this uh, dramatic week. Gracias, Jose Carlos. Gracias a nuestros invitados por compartir con nosotros visiones tan acertadas e importantes sobre las tecnologías geoespaciales aplicadas a los sectores productivos y por supuesto al Estado. Y con este panel cerramos el día de hoy, no sin antes invitarlos a que se conecten mañana a la última jornada de la Semana Geomática 
que desarrollaremos de 2 a 6 de la tarde para hablar sobre cómo se transforman los datos geográficos en información para la toma de decisiones. Soy Gira Pérez y les deseo un feliz resto de tarde. Hasta mañana.